I promised that we would come back and do some more just implicit differentiation problems once we had the formulas for the inverse trig functions. So that what, that's what we've got here. Now, you are responsible for knowing the derivatives of arc sine and arc tangent and arc cosine and arc secant as well. However, since they're new, I put them up on the board. I just put up those two because they're the two that show up in this problem. Okay. So we've got arc tan of y minus arc sine of x squared equals x cubed y, and we're asked to find y prime. I'm definitely not going to do it by solving for y first and then taking the derivative. I'm going to use implicit differentiation. So we will say that the derivative of arc tan of y, and I like to just put that in parentheses to emphasize that that's representing a function of x, minus arc sine of x squared is equal to the derivative with respect to x of x cubed times y, where again, that's a function of x. See, on the left side, I should have this in brackets because I'm taking the derivative of the whole thing. Okay, so for this first piece, I'm taking the derivative with respect to x, but it's a function of y. So I know that's a function composition that's going to be chain rule. I first take the derivative as if y is my variable. So I'm just plugging in y here. So it's going to become 1 over 1 plus y squared times the derivative of the inside part would be times a y prime. Okay. Minus arc sine of x squared. That's also a function composition. Here my inside part is x squared. So in the formula for the derivative of arc sine, I'm plugging in x squared in that input position. So this is going to become 1 over root 1 minus x squared squared times the derivative of that inside part, x squared. That's going to equal the derivative here. This is x cubed times y. That's a product of two functions of x, so this is a product rule. So we'll have the derivative of x cubed times y plus x cubed times the derivative with respect to x of y. So let's go back and evaluate any d by dx's that we need to. I'm going to just bump this to the top. I can say this is y prime over 1 plus y squared minus Let's see, the derivative of x squared will just be 2x, and I'm going to write that on top of this fraction, root 1 minus, and x squared squared becomes x to the fourth. That's going to equal 3x squared times y plus x cubed, and the derivative of y is just y prime. Okay. If I'm just taking the derivative of a function, I get the derivative of that function, and the derivative of that function is y prime. Okay, let's do a quick check. There were two y's in my original equation. I see one, two y primes. Good. Okay, so now I want to get all the terms with a y prime in them together on one side of the equation, and everything without a y prime in it on the other side. All right, I think I'm going to keep the y primes on the left. So we'll have y prime over 1 plus y squared. I'm going to move this piece over, but I'll subtract the x cubed y prime to this side. So then over here, we've still got the 3x squared y, and I'm adding this piece over to the right side. So that's plus 2x over root 1 minus x to the fourth. Okay, so I can now factor out a y prime. That's going to be y prime times the quantity 1 over 1 plus y squared minus x cubed is equal to 3x squared y plus 2x over root 1 minus x to the fourth. Now notice, when I divide to solve for y prime, I'm going to introduce a complex fraction because I'm going to have a fraction on the top and I'm going to have a fraction on the bottom. 
I didn't write out the directions this time, but I meant to say before we started the problem, we're not going to go with complex fractions. We're going to simplify that. Okay. So y prime will equal 3x squared y plus 2x over root 1 minus x to the fourth. That's on top. This quantity is on bottom. 1 over 1 plus y squared minus x cubed. If I don't want a complex fraction, the fastest way I know of to simplify that is to multiply by 1 in the form of everything that I want to cancel all multiplied together. So I want to be able to cancel a root 1 minus x to the fourth, and I want to be able to cancel a 1 plus y squared. So I'm going to multiply by the product of those two factors over itself. Okay, so what's that going to give me? All right, I need to distribute that to this first term on top. Nothing's going to cancel, so I'll just have 3x squared y times root 1 minus x to the fourth times 1 plus y squared. Plus, I need to distribute this to this fraction. Now, that's nice because the root 1 minus x to the fourth will cancel. So I'll just have 2x times 1 plus y squared. On bottom, I need to distribute to this piece. Now the 1 plus y squared will cancel, so I'll just have root 1 minus x to the fourth. I'm sorry, I'd written 1 minus x squared there. It should have been the same thing I have on the top, so both of these should have been x to the fourth. That was my bad. Okay. When I distribute to the minus x cubed, nothing cancels. So I'll get minus x cubed times root 1 minus x to the fourth times the quantity 1 plus y squared. Could I simplify more? Yes. Do I have to? No. Do I want to? No. So I'm going to stop. It would be totally fine to multiply these things out but usually I let whatever I'm going to be doing next be my motivation for how far I will simplify things. And what I'm going to do next is move on to the next video and the next problem.